Hey there, everybody. This is Casey Sutton here to welcome you back to our channel for another episode of our In the Know with Lenovo podcast, sponsored by my good friends over at Microsoft. I'm actually super pumped to get this show on the road today because we're going to be really diving into the newest generation of a handful of our ThinkPad uh, devices and then also Think Center. So we're going to be going over the 7th Gen X1 Carbon, the 4th Gen X1 Yoga, and of course the brand spanking new Think Center Nano that I know we're all super, super excited to start telling our customers about. In the studio to kind of help me dive into these different topics, we have Mr. Kevin Beck, a Lenovo Worldwide Competitive Analyst. How are you doing, Kevin? I'm doing well. Thank you, Casey. And of course, one of my other favorite subject matter experts, Ms. Melinda Douglas, North America's Product Manager for the Think Center lineup. How about you, Melinda? How's it going? I'm doing great. Good. I'm really glad to have both of you guys in here today. You're definitely two of my favorite go-tos when I really want to dive in and get the nitty-gritty details. So let's just jump right in. Now, Lenovo has really changed the game with this next generation of innovations, something that we are known for doing. So please tell me, what really makes the X1 Carbon, the X1 Yoga, and the Nano so special? What are the details our sales teams really need to be able to articulate whenever they're talking to their customers? Um, tell them how it's been streamlined and what you're so excited about with these new devices. Let's start with the carbon. Kevin, you want to take this one and, and run with it? All right. Um, you know, I've been talking about ThinkPads for many years, and this is genuinely one of the coolest ThinkPads that we've ever made. And everybody knows that ThinkPads are popular with our customers because they're slim, most importantly, sturdy, reliable, durable, long battery life. But let me go into some of the things that we've added for the X1 Carbon this year. Uh, we've moved up to a 4K ultra-bright Dolby Vision screen. That's a 500 nit panel, and if you haven't seen one, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, we do also have a new 400 nit low-power full HD model. Uh, touch is available on both of those. Uh, one thing, not neglecting sound as well, that we've added is a four-speaker Dolby Atmos speaker system certified speaker set. We've added two uh, additional subwoofers underneath the product, and we also have added four microphones. We've gone from two to four microphones and moved those to the top edge of the cover so that the device can work for voice-activated functionality even when it's closed. So like all modern ThinkPads and Think Centers for that matter. We're running on Windows 10 Pro. Uh, brings a lot to the table. Things like Windows Hello, BitLocker, all part of our uh, Think Shield security umbrella designation for our products. On the X1 Carbon, as well as the X1 Yoga, we've redesigned the uh, wireless WAN and wireless WAN antennas, moved them around the edge of the system so that they um, can work even when the system is closed, going back to that voice-activated functionality. Um, so if you look at the base of what X1 Carbon is, the 8th Gen Intel Core processor, uh, the Win 10 15 hours battery life, Think Shield, all in all, a uh, great successor to last year's X1 Carbon. So I, I kind of want to dive into one of those things you mentioned a little bit, um, the redesigning of the antennas. You said that means it's fully operational when the device is closed. So, I mean, paint a picture for me. Give me an example of how that might actually be used by one of our customers. Sure. If you think about the classic model of a laptop, it uh, worked when it was open, then we moved to yogas, and it needed to work when it was spun around 360 degrees of the tablet. Um, but laptops didn't really ever have to function or attach to a network when they were closed. Um, so we redesigned both the wireless WAN, the cellular data antennas, as well as the uh, wireless LAN, the regular Wi-Fi antennas, so that even when the system is closed, you get full network connectivity. So now with the uh, combination of that and modern standby, you can now do uh, wake on voice for your system and use voice assistants like Alexa and Cortana. Say, hey Cortana, what time is my next meeting? Hey Alexa, when is my uh, package arriving? Or also use it as a uh, voice over IP de device. Take Skype calls even when the system is closed. That's why we did it. That is just a cool factor. I'm sorry, I'm kind of nerding out. I think that's awesome. I can't wait to try it with my, my uh, new device whenever I get my hands on one. Um, so. I would say, from my perspective, probably the ThinkPad that got the biggest facelift year over year mm -hmm. is the X1 Yoga. So outside of some of the things that you just mentioned that kind of mm -hmm. cover both X1 Carbon and X1 Yoga, let's get a little specific on X1 Yoga and kind of talk through some of its new features and the talking points that we should be going over with our customers. Sure, absolutely. Um, as we go every year out to our customers around the world through customer advisory councils, partner advisory councils, 
uh, feedback groups. One of the key things that came out in the that, that people were really looking for in the premium segment uh, for X1 Carbon and X1 Yoga was authentic materials. Um, and so for the X1 Carbon, obviously we've gone to an exposed carbon fiber weave on the cover so that you can see that it's carbon fiber. Uh, but as you say, the biggest uh, redesign for this year is really the X1 Yoga. Um, it is now a uh, iron gray full CNC, and that means machine cut out of a solid block uh, aluminum cover, uh, bottom and top cover for the system. Um, so real, authentic, exposed metal system, um, absolutely what our customers said they're looking for. Can I ask a, a little bit more of a nitty-gritty mm -hmm. question, but I think mm -hmm. it's one that would be good for us to be able to explain to our customers. The use of the CNC, what does that mean in terms of you know, durability, reliability? Why do we decide that that was the way to go? It needed to be CNC, and how can we explain that to to our end users. Right. So we and many others in the industry for many years have used uh, various panels, in our case, mostly bottom covers, um, out of various types of metal like magnesium and aluminum. Um, and those are stamped or molded, right? Liquid metal is either injected into a mold or they're stamped out of a solid sheet, um, which is an efficient and uh, effective way to do it for say, bottom covers. Uh, but when it comes to doing the entire body of a system, you really need, especially in a ThinkPad, something that's extremely durable and reliable. Um, so carbon fiber is one way to get to extreme thinness and lightness. But another way that we've used now in the uh, X1 Yoga is using CNC, which actually stands for Computer Numerical Control, um, to carve the cover out of a solid block of high-strength aluminum. Now, that took years of design and engineering to make sure that something made out of aluminum could stand up to every single one of the durability and reliability tests, as well as the mill spec testing that we do on ThinkPad. Um, so even though the material has changed, it is absolutely 100% a ThinkPad from a durability, reliability perspective. Now, do you know, are our competitors using the same type of aluminum, the CNC aluminum, for their aluminum-based products? Right. We do have some competitors. Um, you know, our friends in Cupertino uh, have used that, as some others do uh, in various places. But uh, we think for us, taking the core foundational ThinkPad reliability and durability requirements, as I said, including mil spec, and then designing something from the ground up um, is absolutely distinct, if not completely unique in the industry. So, Kevin, I know one, you know, kind of interesting detail that's changing about X1 Yoga from third gen to fourth gen is that the keyboard will no longer retract. And I know for me personally, that was a story I always like to tell my end users. I showed them how it went flat and mm -hmm. explained how, you know, that was great from a usability perspective when you're in tablet mode and how, you know, it protected the keys. And, you know, I just felt like there were a lot of good points to make about that. So with that particular element going away, how can we explain to our customers why we made that decision? And, you know, are there any advantages that we can speak of to kind of soften the blow for those that really appreciated that particular feature? Sure, absolutely. A little bit of background on why we did it in the first place. Um, if you recall, the first yoga form factors and notebooks that we brought out were on the consumer side, uh, about a year, year and a half, something like that, before we ever did it in ThinkPad. And one of the key pieces of feedback that came out of that time period when the whole notion of a yoga system that flipped around was brand new uh, was that people were sort of unnerved, uh, a little skeeved out, a little uneasy, um, that the keys were exposed on the bottom, that they could feel them and that they moved and they worried about them getting damaged. Um, so we addressed that in successive generations of both the uh, X1 Yoga and our other ThinkPad Yogas, like the X Series Yogas, uh, by having two different variations over time, the um, lift and lock keyboard and then the rise and fall keyboard on the most recent generations of X1 Yoga. Um, the, and it worked very well. Um, one of the downsides to that was that it added weight and it added complexity and thickness to the system. Um, and it also uh, occupied the space that we needed in order to be able to put mechanical docking on the X1 Yoga. So we made the decision for this year to remove it. Um, what we gained in return was the ability to do mechanical docking. Um, we were able to make it thinner. We were able to make it lighter. Um, but how we addressed those original concerns uh, are sort of twofold. Uh, one, 
user studies show us that now that we've had yoga systems in the market for something on the order of five or six years, it's just not that much of a concern anymore. People are very used to flipping systems over 360 degrees and using them as tablets. So there's a familiarity and a comfort now with that form factor that wasn't there five and six years ago. Uh, and second of all, the damage of the keys. Um, what we did on both X1 Carbon and Yoga this year is move to a new uh, keyboard design. Uh, so if you were to take an older system like last year's X1 Yoga and look on the side when the keys were not retracted, um, you'd be able to see that there was a little gap. Historically, it's the way they were designed between the bottom edge of the key and the surrounding bezel. Uh, what we've done this year is moved the um, keyboard bezel up relative to the key so that we now have overlap. So it is much, much, much more difficult to get anything in uh, between the key and the bezel or underneath the key uh, to pull it off, such as a fingernail or, you know, accidentally snagging it on something. Um, so long story short, we did it for a reason and we addressed the concern of the damage of the keyboard by redesigning the keyboard to make it much, much more difficult to pull a key off. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Kevin. Well, Kevin, I know you at least have heard me say this a hundred times that I think the difference is in the details. And so I think, you know, being able to tell our customers how we spent so much time on the back end figuring out not only mm -hmm. a way to accomplish this, but what we feel is the best way to accomplish this so that we can make sure it meets our ThinkPad standards in and out. I think those are the things that really help us stand out and differentiate ourselves when talking to our customers. So I love to dive into some of those nitty gritty details. So Agreed. thanks for being the, the scientific mind to take me through it. I always mm -hmm. appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so we've seen a lot of great things on, on the ThinkPad side this year, but I think for the first time in several years, we have something new and fresh and really exciting to talk about in Think Center world. So, you know, Melinda, you are our resident Think Center expert. Why don't you share the news about Lenovo's two newest innovations in, the, you know, the form of the Nano? <laughs> Absolutely. And this is, you know, like you said, brand new product, nothing like in the market right now. And we're super excited to be launching our Think Center Nano. So two different flavors. We have our uh, commercial Think Center Nano, the Nano IoT. And just to give you a little bit about both of these products. So, of course, as you said earlier, this is going to be the world's smallest commercial desktop out in the market. But what makes them very, very unique from a, a specification standpoint is both of these are going to be military spec tested, just like you see on our tiny PCs, uh, basically making it so that these products are durable in different type of environments and they can withstand things like shocks, drops, uh, humidity, and then even dust. And then additionally, these were designed to be uh, space-saving type devices. So covering some key differences between ThinkCenter Nano and Nano IoT. So start first with ThinkCenter Nano. Um, Nano is going to be powered by our eighth, genera eighth generation Intel Core uh, processor, so going up to i7. And it's going to be the same processors that you see on the notebook side of the business. So uh, the same processor we have in our X series and our T series as well. But what really sets these apart from the other desktops in the portfolio is going to be the power savings that you get with it. So when you compare ThinkCenter Nano to our tiny PC, you're getting roughly about 30 percent uh, more energy efficiency uh, than tiny, than 80% than what you would get in our small form factor. So when you think about that, uh, those customers that are deploying thousands of these, they're really saving um, on their bottom line. So from a cost standpoint, roughly about $6 annually in comparison uh, to the tiny, and then about $16 in comparison to our small form factor. So really good message there. And then some of the other things is very unique is this will be our first desktop that can be powered through Type-C. So again, think about uh, having that, that Type-C or Thunderbolt monitor in your environment, so having that single cable. And then also uh, through that, it's also going to support USB Type-C docking. So we think about those customers that need uh, additional monitors that they want to connect to it, as well as uh, different devices like, you know, mice, keyboard. They're going to have plenty of ports for that. Uh, and then other things about ThinkCenter Nano is uh, it's going to be compatible with our Tiny One. So that is really huge because, you know, our customers that are buying tiny, Tinys today are, are buying our Tiny Ones as their modular all-in-one. And we didn't want to lose that by coming out with a new form factor. So uh, 
if a customer simply purchases our tiny in one cube, they'll be able to use our Think Center Nano with a tiny in one. And then we can't forget about security because as we know, security is very, very important to all of our customers and to us as well. So from a security standpoint, you're going to get the TPM chip uh, like we have across all of our, our Think products. And then also uh, the Kensington lock to secure it to uh, any type of immovable object. And um, as you know, Casey, th these desktops are super small to the point where they can fit in your pocket. So we want to make sure that our customers can secure it to any type of uh, desk so it doesn't walk away. Yeah, and I know one thing, and this kind of also goes hand in hand with the idea of the physical security. People love all the different options that we have for Tiny when it comes, you know, to mounting and, and securing it to, to certain to the wall or to the back of the the monitor. So, are we going to have that same type of ecosystem in place for the Nano as well? Just tons of options for mounting. Absolutely. And you're actually gaining more flexibility with mounting um, by moving to ThinkCenter Nano. So as you mentioned, we have, you know, the wall mounts, uh, even to mount it to a back of a monitor. So we have those uh, monitor clamps. But then we've also added the DIN rail uh, mounts as well for ThinkCenter Nano. So you're getting a little bit more flexibility than what we have on Tiny today. Fantastic. Now, as we've already discussed, there are two different flavors of the Nano, and I will be the first to admit that the Nano IoT version is one that, you know, I'm not quite as familiar with. I, I would love to hear some of the specifics around that, and also, you know, maybe help us understand what some of the use cases are, so that way when I'm out talking to my customers, I can say this one fits into XYZ sort of use case scenario and really open up my customers' minds as well. Absolutely. So it, it is something that's fairly new. And I will say the conversations that you know most of us will be having with our customers early on, it's going to be a lot of education because um, you know some customers are using different IoT devices, but not everyone has really tapped into that market. So what Nano IoT is, is, is going to be, uh, look at it as an IoT gateway. So the easiest example that I like to give is, you know, this example I've heard even Kevin talk about and others about the hotel that had the IoT thermometer that was basically, um, you know, right, looking at the temperature of the fish tank. So, you know, they want to see, okay, I want to know what the temperature is. That way, if they have to make adjustments, they can. Now, what ended up happening was someone hacked into the IoT thermometer and use that as a way to get into that hotel's network to now having access to customer sensitive information like credit cards. So uh, the reason why they were able to do that was because there was nothing securing that IoT thermometer to make it so that that wasn't a pathway for them to get into. Now by having nano IoT, you have a gateway. So instead of that IoT thermometer now feeding directly into that network, you have a gateway, which um, had some added value. So some of the added value is, one, it's going to allow you to pull real-time data because you have um, processing compute power right on the edge. So you can pull information a lot quicker. But then also it's going to serve as a bridge between the two, which is going to add an added layer of security. So now if someone were to hack into the IoT thermometer and, uh, you know, try to get into their network, the nano IoT is going to sense that vulnerability and address the issue right there on the edge. And I think it's safe to say that with these modern workspaces that are becoming more and more and more popular, there are so many opportunities for these IoT devices, whether it's Again, tracking the, the temperature of a fish tank or just tracking people's presence as they come in and out of rooms. Uh, these types of devices are only going to grow in volume within organizations. So being able to have a story to explain to our end users how we can make that safer and more efficient, I think is, is an excellent uh, narrative for us to go tell our customers. Absolutely. And, and there are a lot of other use cases as well. You know, I gave you one um, about the, you know, what happened with the hotel. But this is really going to be a, a great device for high impact environments like smart buildings. Um, you think about manufacturing and even retail stores. So those are, those are some, just a few examples. Um, there are plenty of others out there. And I will tell you, you know, as we start to have the conversations with our customers about nano IoT, uh, we'll start to see even more use cases that we haven't considered before. 
And so my ask would be communicate those to us because I find that I have the most success with my customers when I'm able to go tell them what another customer is doing. It really opens their mind to things that they haven't considered before. And not only does that, of course, present us a great opportunity to sell hardware, but it really, it's those types of situations that make us those consultative sellers, you know, someone that they want to come to, a trusted advisor. And I think that, again, really helps us stand out from our competitors in the market. Um, So I think that's excellent. Now, that was a couple of great, excellent use cases. I believe that the actual configuration options are kind of different for the Nano IoT. So can you talk us through that really quickly? Sure. And first, from a design standpoint, you'll notice that Nano IoT looks a little bit different. So uh, in in looking at it, uh, it's going to, one, have shark fins on top of it. And the reason why is because this is going to be a fanless desktop. So it has a heat sink at the top to help dissipate heat. Um, and the reason why is you think about those those different environments that I talked about, especially manufacturing, so where the it's going to be a harsher environment. So this is made to run in places where the temperature can get up to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. So uh, really, really durable uh, PC. But from a specification standpoint, so since it is a fanless, uh, you're not going to get as much compute. But again, for the use case, you won't need as much processing power. But this will have uh, eighth gen up to i3 processor. Um, you're looking at getting roughly up to about four gigs of memory. And then for storage, you're getting roughly five, 12 gigabytes. And if I'm not mistaken, some of the ports on the back are different. And I, you know, I think maybe that's to meet some of these uh, use cases that might have the need for more legacy ports. Absolutely. So, and, and that's going to be something that's very, very different. So you'll notice that Nano IoT is going to have um, a lot of serial connections built into it. So you'll, you'll still get the standard USBs and, you know, very similar to what you see on our Think Center Nano. But again, back to where these are being placed, especially in a manufacturing environment where you have things like robotics that you're running, um, things like sensors, sirens, um, connecting different displays. So for those use cases, you're going to need a lot more legacy ports. And then one thing that we do have that is very different than ThinkCenter Nano is um, an optional I.O. box that can be added to Nano IoT. So the I.O. box gives the customer additional ports and some examples of those where you get, you know, two power over Ethernet, uh, which if you're not familiar with that, you think about uh, different cameras that you may have uh, in your environment. Now you can power those cameras through the Ethernet port built into the I.O. box. Um, it's going to give you additional serial ports, uh, give you digital in and digital out connections back to what I said about manufacturing when you're connecting things like LED lights or even doorbells um, in, in a retail type scenario. And then also you'll have DC input for power. So it sounds like this really is kind of a, a one of a kind device, something that we really are branching out into a new category and Hopefully that means we'll be able to uncover lots of new and different types of use cases that, again, will be huge value adds to our end users. Absolutely, absolutely. So perfect devices for indoor, outdoor type work sites. And it's back to what you said earlier about, you know, we've seen this shift in in workspaces. So with workspaces getting smaller, um, moving to those more modern collaborative type workspaces as well. So these are going to be great devices that customers can really put in their different type of environments. So, you know, this is for our sellers out there. So you can you can shoot us straight. Do we know if our competitors are on the brink of coming out with something similar? I know we're the first to market. Are we way ahead of the curve here, or are they going to be on our our coattails? So that is something that we don't even think about or focus on because, you know, as you know, Casey, we've been first to market with a lot of products. You know, we were first to market with small form factor, first to market with the tiny. And uh, what we've done a great job with is evolving on those products. So um, as you know, from a tiny story to where launching Tiny and then coming out with the modular all-in-one, building on that ecosystem to now putting PCIe cards on it. So it's going to be the same type of thing with ThinkCenter Nano to where, um, you know, not only are we launching this as first to market, um, I do anticipate that our competitors may come out with a product like that, like they did with Tiny. However, um, something that we do well with is evolving and uh, pushing the envelope even further. 
boom. I like it. That is our specialty. It's where we rock. That's why I'm a, a fangirl for Lenovo. So thanks for taking us through all things Nano, Melinda. I really appreciate that. Now, Kevin, I'm going to throw this one back over to mm-hmm. you. We're going to go back and, and shift gears back to think pad a little bit. How do you think our sellers should be positioning X1 Carbon and X1 Yoga against competitor brands? Because again, you know, we're not naive to the fact that our biggest competitors have devices that fall into these categories and line up against X1 Carbon, X1 Yoga. So where do we win? How do we really go show our differentiation and, and convince customers that ThinkPad's the, the place to be? Up front, just want to say that, um, you know, in particular, when you look at X1 Carbon, the um, form factor of that, that's 2.4 pounds, if I'm not mistaken, this year, and just a hair over 15 millimeters. Um, the X1 Yoga is right at three pounds and uh, I think about 17, 18 millimeters. So when you look at the form factor, we're extremely competitive. In fact, in the case of X1 Carbon, there's nothing from any major manufacturer that's anywhere close um, to what we're doing with a 14 inch. A lot of them have 13 inches and they're heavier than we are. Um, but while weight is absolutely something that people are concerned with, um, it really is the totality. Um, and I've got a list here I'm just going to run down real quick. Um, and all of these things are true of both the X1 Carbon and the X1 Yoga. Um, they are both mil spec tested to 12 mil spec methods and 22 sub procedure tests. They both support our ThinkPad Privacy Guard. Uh, e-privacy screen with privacy alert, which uses the IR camera to automatically turn it on. They both have four speaker Dolby Atmos speaker system. They both have Dolby Vision HDR screens, Intel V Pro for management, rapid charge, uh, 4G, wireless WAN, uh, the new CAT 16. They have IR cameras. They both have Think Shutter for privacy to cover the camera. Fingerprint readers, uh, a full range of ports, USB-A and uh, USB-C, as well as HDMI. They both support mechanical docking. They both have touch pads as well as the classic track point. Um, the Yoga, finally, has an onboard pin. So when you look at all those things, I'm not here to tell you that every customer is going to care about every one of those things, but I am literally sitting here looking at the charts that we've done to compare these definitively there is no one else in the market who can support all of those things in singular systems at all much less at the weight and thinness with which we do it in x1 carbon yoga with mil spec testing and the thinkpad legacy of durability reliability and uh, dependability we just put more in i think our engineering is better we think about it longer and harder and for a given price point a given weight a given thickness the customer is simply getting more I'll say it again, the difference is in the details. And I think when you can sum it up like that and package it to your customers, you tell a good story and you can drop the mic. All right. Well, guys, that's about all the time we have today. A big thank you to both Kevin and Melinda for kind of diving in, being our subject matter experts and talking us through some of those really important differences and details. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Casey. So just to wrap things up for all of our listeners, I think that, you know, the big takeaways are that we've got an excellent full-fledged portfolio on both the Think Center and the ThinkPad side this year, but we have some excellent innovations and breakthroughs that we can really hone in on when we think about X1 Carbon, um, the versatility and the power that comes with both that and the X1 Yoga, and of course, just the compact engineering feat that is the Think Center Nano. You know, Lenovo devices are always built very purposely with our end users and what their use cases are in mind. And I think that is something that's unique to us. Our solutions are always designed to just streamline productivity, maximize on that mobility story, and of course, increase connectivity for our clients and their organizations. And I think we've really knocked it out of the park with these three new products, in addition to the rest of the ThinkPad and ThinkCenter portfolios. So if you want to learn more about these awesome new devices, of course, you can always visit Find It, or you can reach out to your brand managers and your specialists for just more resources and more help along the way. As always, I have to give another shout out to our friends at Microsoft for their continued support for our In the Know with Lenovo podcast series. Make sure you're on the lookout for our next commercial podcast episode. And remember, you can always catch up on the previous episodes by visiting the In the Know YouTube podcast channel. Thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you next time.